Jack Reacher, has deceased, retired army. Bronze star, silver star, and a purple heart. What in God's name is a guy like that doing in Margrave? What's a guy like that doing in jail? Zip ties? Cuffs didn't fit him. You guys recycle. You really uh, play Reacher effortlessly. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I'm glad it comes across that way because it's uh, Reacher takes its toll. That's for sure. It no, you really do. It, it's it's very um, fun to watch. And um, we know what I love most about his character is how he can notice people around him so easily. He can just figure them out from the littlest detail. And I was wondering, right. what's a small detail about you that actually says the most about you? Oh, that's. Uh... That's a great question. And, uh, you know, I think we should have a trophy for uh, the person who, who who asked an original question as we go along because we don't get many. So that's, thank you for that. Um, uh, I think um, I tend to be a little slow to, to speak and observational in new situations and uh, uh, wear my heart on my sleeve in uh, familiar situations. But um, I think when people uh, notice that um, I like to read the room first. Okay. Um, it, it's I think I think it's telling both both about uh, me and the and the person who who picks up on that. And I had a, you know a story I tell is I you know, I was on a show one time and it was brand new. We were just all getting to know each other, and there was a an argument being being had over me, oh. and I I'm like I'm like listening to this conversation. They're like, no, he's like this. No, I think he's like this. And I'm like. <laughs> I can, I'm two feet away, guys, I can hear you. And a guy goes, uh, no, you wanna know, you wanna know what kind of guy um, Alan is? He's a chameleon. I was like, chameleon? <laughs> He's like, yeah. I'm like, well, no, I'm not a chameleon. I'm honest, I'm authentic. He's like, no, no, you're, a, yeah, you are, but you're a chameleon. You take on the traits of the room, no matter what it is, and you can't help it. And I'm like, oh, all right. You know, so I like took offense to that because I didn't want to be categorized by somebody, but I've had people pick up on that before and I think it's true. Oh, I, but it sounds like a compliment. Yeah, well, you know, when you, uh, you know, I have this sort of, like obsession with wanting to be different. And so when oh. somebody, when, when you feel like you fit in a box, you get oh, very yeah. offended, you know, like I've been in therapy before. I was in, I was, I was with a, a, like a talk therapist one time and he goes, after a few sessions, I walk in and he hands me this pamphlet and he goes, read through this and tell me what you think. And it was, a, it was, um, it was like a, a, te a textbook, like he copied out of a, like a collegiate textbook, um, uh, High, uh, high creative individuals, I think was the heading. High creative individuals. And it was like, high creative individuals ha have, you know, th they're, you know, this, uh, they're likely to be like this, th these behaviors. Um, and I was so angry with him. I threw the paper down and I was like, no, no, I don't. Think... <laughs> but it described me perfectly. Not yeah. that I'm like some high creative individual, but like, you know, I mean, even bordering on like delusions of grandeur sometime, you know, like they're optimistic and hopeful and um, you know, get overly invested in several creative ideas of their own, you know, whatever. It, but to be pegged as one thing always offended me greatly because I was like, I don't fit in your box, buddy. But I, you know, if I'm being honest, I, I, I do probably fit in some people's boxes. <laughs> well, that's fair enough. Yeah, I, but that, I do love that because I, I love observing people and trying, like I, it makes me as I watch the show want to be more observant and see if I can figure out what Reacher figures out about people. But. Yeah, he rubs off. On, yeah, you. I, I, I share in that. Like as I read the books, as I read the scripts, you know, you're sitting in a restaurant, and you start to go like, you know, I see what's going on here. You start to become, you know, you start to play those those games in real life. Um, I, I, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, well, I know you're a big fan of the books, actually. So I was wondering, have you read? Was there something that you've read that you're most excited to bring to life with your character in this show? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I was surprised, um, you know, when, when I was in the running for this and it started to get to the point where I was like, there's maybe a really good shot. Um, I, I was, I started plowing through the books and I, up until that point in time, I sort of under, understood it as like an action, you know, it was like an actioner. Like I didn't think it was anything else. Yeah. And I found myself laughing out loud every <laughs> book, you know, I mean, there's a, as many, uh, sort of uh, fights or violent moments, battles, as there are laugh, laugh out loud yeah. moments, you know, and uh, I was, I was sort of taken aback by that. So he's, he's a lot of fun. And um, every time I saw that in, uh, in a book, it was like noted, you know, noted this guy has a, he's a wise ass, but he's got a, he's, he's got a good sense of humor. 
Um, yeah. So I, you know, I, that's that's sort of what I what was important to me to infuse in this, keeping it fun for people. Right. Yeah. No, and I didn't expect that much humor either. I, I mean, it's really funny. Yeah. But, um, well, we get to see flashbacks of uh, Reacher in 1998 as a young teen with his brother Joe, and mainly we see that trouble always seems to find him. That's what we get the gist of with his flash flashbacks. But I was wondering if we were to see a flashback of you around that same age, what kind of scenarios would we see you in? You know, I don't, I'm dissimilar to Reacher in one way. Um, mm -hmm. As a child, Reacher was always uh, quick to act, uh, sure-footed, uh, physical, uh, big for his age. Um, the opposite was true for me. I was a late bloomer. I was scrawny, scrappy, uh, you know, fought to keep up with my older brother. Um, and I was kind of a nerd, you know, I was into like wow. chorus and, you know, I was a singer. So I would like rollerblade to chorus practice after school, like very nerdy. <laughs> and the, the, the jocks in school love to make that known, you know, so um, humor, you know, humor to me, comedy sort of sprung out of that period in my life before you know, the end of high school where I really started to grow a little bit and fill out, I, like, it was the only way I could survive because, you know, I was, I was a nerd. Um, so it, yeah, if there were some flashbacks to me, you'd see a kid in neon bike shorts and rollerblades scooting up and down the street, like as happy as could be singing an NSYNC song or something. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's amazing. You know, I, I'm I, being honest here. Yeah, I would have never pictured that. That was like the total opposite of what I thought, especially when you said scrawny. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, late bloomer, late bloomer. Very interesting. Well, um, I do have a game I wanted to play with you. It's a little rapid fire uh, related okay. to the show. Uh, mm -hmm. So whenever you pick your answer, some of them are would you rather. So whenever you pick your answer, just explain why you're picking it. Okay. Uh, Okay, so would you rather solve a crime with Finley or with Roscoe? Oh, that's like asking me what my favorite movie is. They're both my favorite movie. I, I uh, probably Finley. Okay, why? Because because he, you know, because I think Reacher figured him out faster and kind of has him pegged. Mm -hmm. And uh, Roscoe is not somebody that you can pin down. She is feisty and stubborn and. You know the kind of person where it's like either you you do this or I do this, but we can't both. It's not town isn't big enough for the both of us. You know, that's actually a good point because I do. I mean, I've only uh, like so far in this years. I don't. I haven't figured her out. Yeah, I never even thought about that. We know way more about Finley. So yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Would you rather have some Cajun craw tater chips or <laughs> a Clark bar? A Clark bar. Let me tell you something. I <laughs> dove into those craw tater chips um, because Willow was like, I can't, do I have to eat another bag of craw <laughs> oh, taters? Not... And she's like, she's like, they're actually not that bad. So I tried a few. They weren't that bad. Yeah. Um, but the Clark bar, I mean, a Clark bar. Yeah. I eat like 60 of those. And then I, I, I would eat <laughs> like between takes you shouldn't eat because yeah. you're going to get tired of the food. You're going to get full. I would eat them the entire time we were filming, whether we were shooting or not. I love those things. You know, I've never even had one. I was going to ask, what is what was your favorite childhood candy bar then? Oh, I was a Milky Way guy. Oh, Milky Way. Okay. Oh yeah, get the nuts out. No, no Snickers for me. I'm a Milky Way oh. guy. I want the I want the caramel and chocolate. Okay, okay, that's so funny. I thought that the chips they sounded really good, but now I don't even want to try them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what was your favorite candy? Uh, that's funny. I would say Butterfinger. Oh, okay. Yeah, I yeah. like Butterfinger, but it gets in your teeth, you know, like you got to really, does. It you got to get it out. So yeah. you got to fight. Yeah. Yeah, you do. It's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but okay, would you rather be on social media or have no online presence? Have no online presence. Okay. Social media is very, um, for, for a long time, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand why you know, but people just, you got to have a social media or like, you're not going to get hired. If it's, if it's you and somebody else and you're equally as talented, they're going to go with the guy that has more social media. I mean, I heard that a million times, but I resisted. I, I, I was for several shows. I never had it. And I, yeah. I, I wish I had, cause I've missed opportunities there, but um, I didn't understand the point. And I cannot stand like advertising myself going like look at how cool i'm not i'm not the one to create like some i don't ever want to make somebody feel less than either so like i don't want to you know curate my life in such a way that makes people go like wow look at everything you know it's just not what it's about to me and so everything i do it's like i try not to show that kind of stuff 
the, you know, and then, but then I got friends going like, man, you do so many cool things. Show that on your social. I'm like, no, I can't, I can't. It was only, it was a couple of years ago where I kind of had an early midlife crisis where I had to recalibrate like what my concept of why we're here. Mm. Why are we here? You know, what's my purpose? What's the meaning of all this? And what are we to do with that? And it's really, it's about other centeredness, right? I mean, I think I had to really, instead of, uh, you know, sort of being this ambition driven empire hungry person, you know, goal oriented person, it was about how can I use, you know, my gifts and time and talent treasure to make other people's lives better. And um, social media is just now one small extension of that, where I use that platform to either entertain people in a fun way, or more importantly, um, to challenge us to, um, to, to see the world through, you know, um, deeper eyes, maybe more spiritual yeah. eyes, you know, to, to, to channel our other half, you know, that, that we don't often talk about. So yeah. anyway, so, but it's, it takes work for me to do that. Cause I don't like putting myself out there like that. So I, don't yeah. know, I would say, no, I'd rather be a hermit. No, I I, no, I completely no. understand. I see your the, the internal struggle there with that, but that's a really great answer. Um, and then I was asked, so would you rather live in Margrave, Georgia, or Smallville, Kansas? Oh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, you know, Margrave is quite idyllic. <laughs> you know, um, but you've got supers in Smallville, uh, so yeah. I maybe Smallville, you know. Yeah. If you got to get old old Clark Kent off the couch, you know. You can uh, you can take care of some issues for you. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe Smallville, which is awesome that Kristen Crook is in this show. That totally. That was <laughs> a that, that was a pleasant surprise. That was yeah. she's incredible. Yeah, and uh, final question for the game. Um, it's it's not exactly a would you rather, but uh, it's clear that Jack and uh, Joe they both look up to each other and i was wondering who's a person in your life that you've looked up to and why mm, my dad yeah that's not to take anything away from my mom if she's mm -hmm. listening out there my dad um you know he if you understand his his past his childhood what he's been through um you know somebody who was abandoned as a child and um you know was just it's that you look at him and you understand if you see the big picture, you go like, what chance did this person have to live a, a whole healthy life to, you know, to, to raise a family, to understand um, how to, you know, just how to be a, 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 a good citizen, a contributing member of society, let alone a great father um, who served his family. Well, he, he, I'm my, my dad is my hero. Um, you know, and this is somebody who, you know, as we were getting older, we, you know, military family, you know, you don't make a lot. It's very kind of blue collar. Mm -hmm. And uh, my my two siblings, you know, I have two two brothers, older and younger, and we all wanted to do all, all of it, all the sports, all the academics, um, all the clubs, all the chorus, all this traveling baseball. I mean, there was every and my parents never said no. There was always we're going to find a way to help you experience all these things until we find what you're really passionate about and really good yeah. at. And um, my dad was a chief master sergeant in the Air Force. And I hope um, he doesn't mind me telling this story, but um, you know, this is just, uh, it shows what a remarkable person he is. He, Chief Master Sergeant is the highest rank that you can be in the, mili in, in the Air Force. And it's one of the hardest to achieve out of all the branches of the military. You know, 1% of uh, service members become a chief. It's hard to do. And you're, that's the top, you know, you're at the top of the, the, the food chain. And we couldn't afford to do all the things that we wanted to do later in high school when we're all getting, involved in, in, you know, my older brother going to college and he took a job as a night security guard at an airport um, where he would work all day, nine to five, he'd come home and nap for a little bit. And then he'd work night shifts all night long, come home and nap for a couple hours and go to work. And he did that for as long as it took to, you know, to, to help us through those, you know, that, that time and, and, all, and that season of us trying to explore what we were. And I just find that remarkable, you know, and I hear about some of the, some of the people that served under him, Dave, what are you doing here? What the hell are you doing here, Dave? <laughs> you know, get, get, you know go, you go home. You don't have enough to, you know, and he didn't explain himself to anybody. He just did what he had to do. I just think that's a remarkable. I hope to be the kind of man he is. Oh, that is so sweet. What a, what a selfless father. Yeah. That's yeah, really true. great. 
That's, that's sure. awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, well, I think that's my time, but I could talk with you forever. This was like a real I don't joy. want this to end. You have got the most interesting questions. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I hope. And I, I know you have to do a lot of these. So I do. But I mean, honestly, you not like I thought the first different question was going to be it. And you this whole thing is different. I love it. I just love <laughs> it. You're great. I, I hope we get to do it again. Oh, I hope so too. I hope so too. This was this is great, and uh, best of luck with the show. I think it's Thank really you. fun. I, I'm I'm enjoying. I'm I've I've got I've watched the first four episodes, so I can't wait to watch the rest. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. It gets better. Each episode gets better. You boys knew what's about to happen to you. You'd leave now. I don't go getting yourself arrested for murder. Shooter was someone who knows firearms well. Lightning. Bullets were 95 grain, that's subsonic. This wasn't a first time. These people are connected and stone cold killers. So be smart, don't break the law, and promise me you won't end up in another holding cell. No. Yeah, you got Looking for payback? Payback, justice, vengeance. Yeah, you got Looking for the whole gang. You're gonna kill a whole lot of people, aren't you? Already started. You're about to get your ass kicked. No, I'm just gonna break the hands of three drunk kids. There's four of us. One of you's gotta drive to the hospital. 